Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. I'm Vijay Prashad from Globetrotter. There's been a lot of talk recently about China opening up the country on January 8th, ending, as it were, the zero COVID policy. To learn more about what's happening in China around the COVID pandemic, also this change of policy that's taken place um, this month in December, we decided to talk to Li Jingjing, a reporter from CGTN. She has a very famous YouTube channel, not only famous for its content, but also it was criticized by the New York Times for offering views that the New York Times didn't like, an infamous article. Um, Li Jingjing, welcome to People's Dispatch. Thank you, Vijay, for having me. Well, as I said, China has decided to open up the borders after uh, three years of quite rigorous zero COVID policy. Uh, why has the government decided to change the policy and what's the mood in the country? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for having me. So I think um, I, I know a lot of tensions on this COVID uh, restriction change. So uh, let me introduce something because actually in, it's not a sudden change. Over the past two years, China has been constantly optimizing its COVID prevention and control measures. Like it updated nine different e editions of protocols uh, according to the different variants, different situations. And of course, the latest change got wide attention because internationally, uh, China will open its border in early January uh, and it, it will drop all the mandatory mass testing and quarantine for inbound travelers. That means uh, Chinese tourists can travel freely internationally as they did before. And also um, anyone from outside of China who wants to visit, visit China for tourism purposes or to study, to work for businesses, they can also freely travel to come to China. So it's a good news. I know many people we're looking for looking forward this change for such a long time. So finally, this is uh, happening, and also domestically, uh, over the past two months, there are a lot of changes as well in terms of the COVID preventions. For example, in over the three years, we have to if we want to go to anywhere in China, we have to show our uh, the green code. Uh, which proves that we didn't go to the high risk regions. And also we have to show with the health kit, it's a code to prove that we are healthy. We have, it has our, the information that we got our vaccination, that we got our negative test results. But over the past two months, all this requirements has been dropped, had been dropped. So um, we no longer need to show all these proofs, all these health kits, all this green code to go anywhere. And um, uh, all the restaurants, shopping malls, gyms um, have reopened. So now people can, can, can get, basically we are almost back to the life in 2019. But uh, even though there are a lot of easing of the restrictions, that doesn't mean China has no plans to deal with the uh, COVID anymore. There's still a very carefully designed procedures to protect the vulnerable groups. For example, uh, why we're doing this change now? Uh, because uh, especially recent outbreaks in China, it proved that Omicron is less lethal compared to Delta, compared to the original variants that caused the outbreak in Wuhan in 2020. So Omicron is less lethal and it, it and the medics experts got enough statistics from the outbreaks in China. And also now the, they're still doing the three uh, very important things. First, to get the elderly vaccinated uh, because even though Omicron is less lethal, less deadly, still uh, old people above 60s are still facing higher risks to be uh, to turn into critic, to turn to critically ill. And uh, so they are vaccin vaccinating the elderly. Second, uh, all hospitals, clinics across China are running in full capacity because a lot of people are having fevers, even mildly ill. So now the pressure is on the medics, of course, and they are treating the vulnerable, vulnerable groups. And third, um, they are educating the public about how to 
um, recover from COVID, how to take the proper medicines, how to treat themselves. So um, now the whole public in China, uh, since uh, many of them are, uh, are getting COVID or are, are sick, are going through this recovery procedure, now they know how to uh, cure themselves, uh, even though they're staying at home. So they're easing of restrictions, but still we have plans to protect the vulnerable groups. And I think you also asked, how are the pe public feel about these restrictions? I think, you know what, um, of course there are mixed feelings towards the uh, strict COVID preventions, but I would say most people really supported this preventions uh, because uh, I know a lot of people outside of China said zero COVID is not achievable. It's impossible to do that. But you know what? China actually achieved zero COVID in 2020. In later 2020, we eliminated the most deadly uh, COVID across China. And China was the safest place in later 2020. Uh, it was later when when there were different variants across the world and that snuck back in China. So China actually achieved zero COVID, but this thing cannot be done if China is the only country doing the strict um, uh, controls. So, and if all the world were coordinating, were uh, putting their efforts into eliminating COVID, the original variants, we probably wouldn't see these different variants that is raging around the world and still taking lives around the around the world. So the and why the strict measures was very necessary in China. First, China is a large country with 1.4 billion people. No other countries except India can has such such a large population, and China has an aging population. There's a large group of people who are the elderly and who are in the vulnerable groups. So China cannot just let the virus rip. Otherwise, we will see millions of deaths in China as well. But you know what? China still has the lowest death to COVID-19, which is stood at uh, around 5,000 to 6,000. And, um, and uh, I was the reporter who volunteered to go to Wuhan when the city was under lockdown and when the, the pandemic was very scary back then. And I saw with my own eyes how deadly and how horrible the, all, all, the original variant could be. And I think most people this probably still remember what it was like in early 2020 when the variants was raging in their countries. Uh, it, it was very lethal, taking lives of millions. So it was very necessary that China adopted these strict measures, put a lockdown on the cities. So because it stopped, millions of people from from dying and um and uh, what would why we are doing this strict uh, restrictions for three years i th i know some westerners start to criticize china's measures i saw a pinning piece i think are uh, quite a uh, ridiculous they said they said why are you adopting this um strict measures in past three years now you ended ended up in the same place as we did but i want to say no we didn't end up in the same place in the past three years, China was really buying the time um, to first increase the hospital beds, especially the beds in ICUs. I have some numbers. Uh, for example, in the past three years, the beds, hospital beds for critically ill increased by 80,000. And, and also doctors increased by uh, doctors for ICUs increased by one third, and the numbers of nurses was doubled, and also the group there were even larger group of medics who are standing by who can uh, transfer to work for ICUs immediately. So over the past three years, China was increasing hospital beds for the vulnerable groups, vaccinating the elderly, and uh, also uh, let's not forget. Uh, in 2020, the China's doctors uh, shared the sequence of the virus and also donating medic medical stuff and um, sending medical teams to different countries. 
and uh, donating uh, vaccines to the world to help other parts of the world recover from this. So the three years wasn't didn't go in vain. The three years we were buying the time to protect the vulnerable groups. So, so far since we, um, uh, the hospital beds are increased, uh, medical teams are, are um, we have more medics and the uh, Omicron finally, uh, we in the three years we waited the we waited the virus to got weaker and weaker and finally Omicron is less deadly. It's time to uh open the border, uh, because uh, of course we saw the damage to our economy, and a lot of people have some discontent, and uh, which is understandable because doing this uh, strict COVID measures in for three years was uh, exhausting for a lot of people, but they know they were doing this to protect their family members, to protect the elderly groups, to protect the vulnerables, uh, even though it means we have to sacrifice our economy, but it's prioritizing the lives of the people. And now everything is um, uh, less deadly and we are much more prepared. So I think it's a perfect timing. Uh, it's a good timing to finally um, resume our life back to the 2019 well having um having got covid in 2020 the first of three times i can tell you that um it was very very uh, debilitating in 2020 the original strain without a vaccine um certainly zero covid was a strategy used by many countries australia to vietnam um the democratic people's republic of korea um, you know, a range of countries followed zero COVID. China outlasted most of them. It is said, Jing Jing, that China held on to zero COVID partly because of the low vaccination rate among the elderly, what you mentioned. Overall vaccination rate in China is about 89% of the population vaccinated. But people over 80, they say that the rate is only 40%. Why is it that older people in China didn't va get vaccinated? What was the reason for that? Uh, this is from my uh, observation. Not, I don't think it represents the whole uh, situation in China. But I know for first, uh, some uh, old people, they already have some underlying issues. They already have some. So they worried um, this vaccine may... Uh, they are not sure whether it's good for them since they're already suffering from cancer or different uh, serious diseases. So they had their doubts. And, um, you know, and also I personally uh, know some people from the older generations. Um, I don't know whether it's just in China or it's probably the same for, uh, excuse me for my cats, who's <laughs> just walking around. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, some people from older generation, especially in some Asian countries or in, or in China, they are a little bit stubborn, uh, not entirely trusting medical um, resources. They're just, just having this, their doubts. And especially older generations, I re remember, my, it's very hard to convince your Chinese parents or Asian parents to go to hospitals. And when they, when, Sometimes even when they have serious issues, they would say, oh, I'm fine. It's okay. I don't want to um, uh, go to a hospital and spend the extra money or I don't want to cause any trouble for you. So I think for some older people, they just have these concerns or they just don't want to um, be the burden of their families. So yeah, but you know, the vac vaccines are free. And uh, anyone who wants to get a vaccines, you can just go to the local community and get a vaccination. It's it's so accessible, so available. So yeah, that's that's my guess, but I'm not sure whether it represents all the <laughs> older generations. Well, I just want to tell you that my mother who died during the pandemic at the age of 91, not of COVID, uh, was delivering tea to people during the pandemic. And when I asked her, I said, why are you doing this? You're going to get COVID. She said to me, I'd rather die of COVID than boredom. Um, you can't make uh, people do things. And I must say, uh, it is a testament to a, um, a population that people were willing to close themselves down in order to protect the elderly. 
um, it's actually something that one needs to emphasize a little more. Jing Jing Li, thanks a lot for coming on People's Dispatch. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.